Hey friends, today I wanted to share how I have set up my development environment with WSL2 and how I use it in conjunction with VS Code. So let's dive into the video. So I have set up a VM in Azure that's running Windows 10 and I already have a blog post on how I have set up WSL or like how you can install WSL. So we'll go and open that. And basically, if you don't know what WSL is, it's Windows subsystem for Linux, and it lets you run GNU or Linux environment, including most command line tools, utilities, and application directly from Windows. And you can install Ubuntu, Kali Linux, and there are many other flavors available in the Microsoft App Store that you can install. So what I'm gonna do is we'll enable WSL first, as you can see here, the step one. So we'll copy this command and I'll link down the blog post that we are using here. So we need PowerShell in administrator mode. So we'll wait for that to show up. I'll make the text bigger. There we go. I think that should help. And the command that I copied was this. So we'll wait for that feature to be enabled. And why I like, I think WSL is because I'm really familiar with the Linux command line and it just makes it easier when I'm maybe running like a Python test server or a Flask dev server, right? and also like managing virtual environments. I'm really familiar with setting up virtual environments in Linux. I don't know how different it is in Windows and I have not explored like how you can do that on Windows. And similarly, whenever I'm doing like some kind of front-end development, it's easier for me to do it in the WSL environment that I have set up. And in the end, it's just a preference thing, but I have had a few Twitter DMs and then also a few YouTube comments on how I use WSL and how they can use it with VS Code. So that's why I'm doing this demo. Um, so in order to update to WSL2, you can see we have a few requirements here. So for x64 systems, you need version 19.03. And then for ARM64, you need version 2.0.0.4. And the build should not be lower than 18.3.6.2. So make sure you meet those requirements on your personal machine. And now we'll enable the virtual machine feature again by running this command. And as it says, you need PowerShell as admin. So I'll copy and paste that. And we'll wait for that command to run. So this one is faster than the previous one. Um, and then we also have to download the Linux kernel update. So this is the package which will allow you to run WSL2. And once that feature is enabled, we can run this from our downloads folder. So if I go here, downloads and click on So Windows subsystem is under prematurely because of an error. Your system has not been modified to install the program at a later run. Okay. So it didn't detect the WSL2. Um, oh, I see. It says right here in step three that I have to restart the machine. So yeah, read the instructions carefully. Even though I have written this, uh, I completely forgot that we need to restart our machine here. So we'll go ahead and do that and wait for the machine to restart. A few moments later. Okay, so the machine is back online and let's open our article again. So we'll restore the pages that we had open. And I believe now we have to just install the kernel update package because we did this step. So if I go back to the downloads folder and double click this, this time it should detect WSL. And we have WSL2 installed. 
So now we have to set WSL2 as the default version. So by default, when you do all these steps, WSL1 is set as default version. So what we'll do is run this command in PowerShell. And also make sure we are running PowerShell as admin. And make it easier by zooming in. So the operation was completed successfully and WSL2 is our default version now. So now we would open the Microsoft Store and then search for our favorite Linux distribution. I know mine is Ubuntu and Kali Linux. So we'll go and install Ubuntu. And I'll hit on get. So as you can see, it's starting the download. So just going along with the guide while we download that. So the first time when we would open our Microsoft app, it'll open a shell in, basically it's using WSL2 and it'll open an Ubuntu shell here. And you can see it says installing, this may take a few minutes. And I just closed the Microsoft Store app just to make it bit more readable here so as you can see so I ran into an issue with the BIOS settings so when I was installing Ubuntu it said that I need to enable virtualization in the BIOS and as I told you I was doing this demo on an Azure VM so going into the BIOS settings is not possible so what would happen is after you open that Ubuntu prompt it will go through couple of settings and we'll ask you for a username and password. And after setting that up, I'm going to continue this demo on my own machine where we already have Ubuntu in WSL2 installed. So I'll start sharing my screen again and you can see how I have set Windows Terminal app here with Ubuntu and you can also see Kali Linux here. And if you want to know, I can cover this in another video, but Windows Terminal is a great app and you can already see we have are want to installed here so this is just a list of directories that i have if i do ls-l you can see all of the directories that we have and it's running this on ubuntu so you can see neofetch is not installed so let's go ahead and install neofetch with sudo app install neofetch so that I can show you it's actually Ubuntu. And as you can see, it's getting all the packages. Maybe I should make it bigger here. So now if we do new fetch, you can see it gets Ubuntu 20.04 LTS running on Windows 10 and all the other information about the hardware that I have. So now the next step is to make it available in Visual Studio Code. So if I, if I open Visual Studio Code, I would highly recommend you to install this extension, which is called Remote WSL. So what Remote WSL does is it gives you an option here to open your project with WSL. So let's say I want to open new WSL window. So this will open in the VS code on top of WSL. So if we look at this and open a terminal, you can see that it's using our Ubuntu image here and you'll get the terminal for that. So you can basically build Linux apps. And if you check the blog post too here, I cover that, that the remote WSL extension lets you use VS Code on Windows to build Linux application that run on the Windows subsystem for Linux. You get all the productivity of Windows while developing with Linux-based tools, runtimes, and utilities. So I highly recommend that extension and basically you just open your repo or your project folder in that 
VS Code window. So here you can see that I'm making changes to learn to cloud.guide and I'm using my WSL Ubuntu image to work on these changes. But yeah, that covers up how you can use Linux on Windows and also configure WSL with VS Code 